So which one is better, the Divi theme or the Elementor page builder? Which one is better? Which side are you on? Now today in this video, I'm going to give you a complete comparison and a full breakdown of both page builders to help you decide what is the best page builder for you. And tears will be shed, you know, blood will be spilt because there can only be one winner. So I'll be talking more about what I think is better of the two at the end of the video. And we're going to go ahead and break this video down into certain categories. So we'll first be talking about the ease of use. So is this easy to use? We'll be talking about the templates. We'll talk about the features, the price, and lastly, the support. And then I'll go ahead and talk about the pros and the cons of both page builders, like which one's faster, which one's slower, etc. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's first talk about which one is easier to use. So first, let's compare the ease of use between the Divi theme versus the Elementor page builder. Now this right here is the Divi theme, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of how both of these page builders work. So let's say, for instance, I want to take this element right here and drag it above this. I'll drop it right there and then take this element and then go ahead and drag it right here. Also, at any time, if you want to make changes to your, your text, you would just double click on the text and then put in something like a um, you know, keyboard or something like that. And also, I find this user interface very simple to use, especially for beginners. So for example, if I want to add in space right here, I can just take this and drag it. Also, if I want to add in more space right here, I can just take this and also drag it like that. And then also I can do the same thing on this side as well, making it a very simple and convenient way of building websites. Now I do find that most beginners actually favor Divi because of its drag and drop builder. And I do find that the visual experience with Divi is just way more easier to use than the Elementor page builder. Now let's say for instance, you wanna add in a new section. So for example, right here, I'll click on this blue icon, click on regular, and then simply go ahead and select how many columns you want. And then right here, I'll just simply select one of these icons. So this right here is a blurb icon. And what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and copy this and I'll just go ahead and drag it like this. And then same thing right here, copy, and then I'll go ahead and drag it right there. So you can see here how the editing experience is very simple to use. And I find that most beginners who are learning WordPress uh, might wanna use Divi here because the visual experience is a lot easier to use than most page builders. Next, let's compare the UX between the Elementor page builder. So is this easy to use? Now, personally, I do find that the Divi theme offers a much more user-friendly interface than Elementor, and I'll explain why. So for example, right here, if I wanna add in more space right here, like push this up or down, what you have to do with this page builder is you have to actually click on this icon right here, go to the advanced tab, and then uncheck this, and then you have to actually click and manually assign it like this. And I find this user interface very old school. I feel that most page builders today offer a more user-friendly interface. Now, one other important thing to note here is that when you develop your websites, you're on this little squished section like this compared to Divi, where you can kind of edit everything on the full width. Now, the reason why this matters is because, for example, right here we have this button right here, and although it appears that it's squished, if I actually close it, you can see here how now the website looks different. So when you're editing your website, you might run into problems of it looking different than you're actually developing it on the back end. Now let's just say, for instance, you wanna add in a specific section. So it works very similar to Divi. So right here, I'll click on this plus icon and then click on the plus and then select the amount of rows I want. So here, click on three rows and then I'll click on this right here. And then you can go ahead and drag in the elements inside the box like that. So this process is not that bad. It's pretty easy to use. I feel that this interface is simple in most regards. However, if you want to go ahead and add space again, uh, that again is a very uh, tedious thing to do. So you're gonna have to go over here to the gear icon or these dots, go to the advanced section, uncheck this. And then again, you have to add space by clicking like this. Now also you'd have to do the same thing within this module to go to the advanced tab if you wanted to add space within your module. And I just feel that that's a very dated way of building your website. So for example, right here, when we compare this to Divi, I can just go ahead and just change everything I want inside of the module like this and just change anything I want. And you can see it's a very visual, easy interface. So uh, in that regard, as far as UX design and ease of use, I find that most beginners would probably prefer Divi here because the UX for this is not really that friendly compared to other page builders. Now this UX came out three years ago and the Elementor page builder hasn't updated it in three years. So I'm not really sure why that is, but um, if you're gonna ask me as far as 
the UX experience goes, I'm gonna have to give this round to Divi because I just feel that this editing experience is just so much easier and convenient to use comparing it to the Elementor page builder. So for this round, we're gonna give this round to the Divi theme. Next, we'll talk about the templates, and I'll make this section very fast. Divi offers around 1,036 total layouts with around 140 layout packs. Now, the reason why I love Divi's layout packs is because every single pack actually has the entire design kit. So it offers the home, the about us page, the contact, the home, the pricing, et cetera. So you're not stuck with those one page templates. And the reason again why I love these is because the entire design complements each other. So you can see here how you can actually see the page, you can see what it looks like, and you can decide if you want this on your website. Also, you don't have to load the website. You can click on uh, right here on view demo right here, and you can actually visually see the website in work. So you can actually see what the website will look before you load it onto your website. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, one thing to note here is that some other designs are just not the best. I'll, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it out there. Now, they do have nice designs, but a lot of them just aren't practical. Like, for example, right here, they have uh, the Divi Bank layout. And what I've seen from the designs is that a lot of them are very, I guess you can say too artsy and they're too, they're too trendy kind of, and they're just not practical for a lot of typical businesses. So for example, right here, this is the Divi Bank layout. And you know, I just feel like this is just not a bank. I feel this is too artsy. It's too, it's just too, there's too much white space and it's just too, it's too abstract. And I feel like this is just not, um, not suitable for a bank. So although they do have nice layouts, I feel that sometimes when they make these designs, they're just not practical in the sense to use for the certain uh, niche. Also, they have one for like the contractor as well. And again, I just feel that some of them are just, they're too artsy, they're too flashy, too showy, and they're just not practical for the average user. Now let's go ahead and compare this to the Elementor's templates. So right here, I'll click on templates. Now Elementor offers only around 150 to around 200 templates, and they don't really make that much. I think they make one kit every single month. Now the templates right here are actually very limited. So you can see here how they only give you a one page design. So in that regard, I really think that a lot of these layouts are completely useless. However, they are starting to introduce a new feature or a new project, I guess you can say, where they're adding in like the home, the about, the project and the contact page as well. Now this is exclusive to only pro users. So I think they've actually seen what Divi's done and they're actually saying, look guys, we need to offer uh, the full layout packs for our clients because uh, before they were just offering these one, uh, one layout packs like this one right here and then this one right here and they're just not really practical. But again, you can see here how they are starting to introduce uh, full design kits, which in my opinion is really nice. However, they don't offer as much and I feel that a lot of these designs are very limited. However, there is a third party plugin that you can use that will give you access to around a thousand more templates. However, we are talking more from the company's perspective point of view. Now, they also have another cool feature called blocks. Now, Divi does not have this feature. So for example, if you wanna go ahead and add in just a specific section, you'll click on this and click on insert. And what it'll do is that it'll insert this block onto your website. So Divi does not have this and Elementor does. So I do like this feature a lot from Elementor. The only issue with these blocks, in my opinion, is that they're just not really designed properly. I mean, these just look very bland, very ugly, and I just couldn't use this on any client website. So although I love the idea and concept, I just feel that these just aren't practical to use uh, for a certain website. So if you're gonna ask me, you know, which one has better templates, we're gonna give this round to the Divi theme because the Divi theme actually offers images, they offer a lot of vibrant colors, and they have a lot of layout packs, and they continually make two a week. So in this round, we're giving it to Divi. Next, let's talk about the features. So which page builder offers more features? Now the Divi theme offers around 39 modules for you to use on your websites. The Elementor page builder offers around 66, not including some of the default ones that come with WordPress. Now on a separate note, there's actually a lot of add-ons that you can get with Divi, and there's also a lot of add-ons you can get with Elementor. In fact, Elementor offers a bigger third-party marketplace probably than Divi, 
And I like the add-ons more with Elementor. They're a lot more stable, they're faster, and they're easier to use. I find that the add-ons with Divi theme can be very glitchy. Sometimes they don't work. And ultimately, I just think that the add-ons for Elementor are just a little more stable and easier to use. Now, talking about the theme builder, so I'm gonna compare the theme builders now. Now, what a theme builder is, it basically gives you the ability to add a custom header and a footer on virtually any single page you want. That includes custom post site pages and also four four pages, shop pages as well. So in short, for those of you who have no idea what I just said, it allows you to fully design any single page you want with the builder. Now here you can see for the Divi theme builder, I have a global header and applied to my entire website. For my about us page, I have a special custom header and the default global footer. And then for my account page, et cetera, I have a special custom header and also a global footer as well. Now comparing this to the Elementor theme builder, I feel that this is just, again, a very old fashioned way of a theme builder process, I guess you can say. So for example, right here, the archive page would control these, this section, this would control this section, and this right here would control this section. Now I feel that you, if you had a lot of conditions, it would be very difficult and hard to see compared to this. And I feel that this is more user friendly. However, both theme builders have the same results. So it doesn't really matter about the style because uh, feature wise, they both do the same thing. But Elementor does offer a lot more modules than Divi. So for this round, we're gonna give this to the Elementor page builder because I feel that with this amount of modules and Divi does not offer that many, I feel that Elementor just offers a little bit more in this regard. So for features, we're giving this round to the Elementor page builder. Next, let's talk about the reliability and the performance of both page builders. Now, in my personal opinion, I do believe that Elementor is just a little bit more faster than Divi. So for example, I'll go ahead and click on edit with Elementor and I'm gonna load the builder. And you can see how the builder loaded pretty quickly. Now doing that with Divi, I'll click on enable the visual builder and it takes just a little bit more longer. So here, maybe around, I don't know, maybe around one or two seconds longer, not that big of a deal. Now, personally, I do think that Elementor is just a little bit more stable than Divi. I find sometimes that when I'm using this builder, it can be very glitchy at times. Now, both page builders also have their bugs and glitches, but I find that I run across uh, bugs and glitches a lot less than I do with the Elementor page builder. Now, it's kind of hard to demonstrate the bugs and the glitches because you'll just have to use the builder and understand that once you kind of mess around with things, you run into it. But uh, for me to visually show you like bugs and glitches, it would not be easy. So uh, I'm just basically letting you know that uh, between both page builders, I do believe Elementor is a little bit more faster than Divi. Now there are also reports of websites breaking with Divi and also Elementor as well. Now, personally, I have never broken a website updating Divi. And I feel that a lot of the times when these, these designers use Divi, they add these custom CSS codes in it, they modify it. And when you update Divi, Divi will overwrite that unless you have a child theme. So this could be due to people just not properly making child themes for their themes because uh, that's a very common mistake. But personally, I have never ran into that problem. However, I have heard from Facebook groups, sometimes when people update Divi, they do get broken websites. And also the same thing for Elementor, just not as much. Now, as far as reliability and performance goes, I'm gonna give this round to Elementor. I've been using both page builders for some time. So this round goes to Elementor page builder. Next, we're gonna talk about the pricing model. And I brought myself in this video because there's a lot of confusion in the community about the pricing model. And I've seen a lot of blogs and YouTubers talking about it. And I don't really think anyone really understands how this really works. So let me explain. So the DV theme right here will charge you $89 a year for yearly access. You get unlimited support and unlimited updates. Now, if you don't want to renew after the $89 a year, you will lose your support and updates. And that can be very bad because if there's an update with WordPress and Divi's not compatible, your site can have some issues. However, they offer a lifetime access. Now with the lifetime access, you pay $249 and you get lifetime updates and support forever, which is uh, an amazing pricing model. So that means in four years from now, if you purchase lifetime access, you will still get the updates from Divi. So when Divi has those big feature updates and things they talk about, you get all of that included for free because you've already purchased the lifetime access. I have a discount in the description below. I'm not trying to sell you, I'm just telling you, all right? But anyway, so that's exactly how that works. So uh, I feel the lifetime access is great. I feel the pricing model is uh, too cheap. I think that 
DV and Elementor should both charge a lot more for their page builders. Now let's take a look at the Elementor page builder. So with the Elementor page builder, now they do have a free version, but quite honestly, uh, if you're a developer or a designer or you're even someone who wants to build a website, you're probably going to upgrade. Most of you are going to upgrade to the pro version. Now with the pro version, they offer $49 for only one site. So that can be very limited. However, if they have a $99 a plan for three sites, still pretty bad. I don't like that model at all. Here they have $199 per year and that's for 1,000 websites. Now let me reiterate here. At any time, if you stop paying for this policy, you lose the support and updates. And again, that can be very bad because if there is a PHP update on a server that's not compatible with Elementor, you're gonna have problems. If you are a, um, if there's a WordPress uh, update and it's not compatible with that version of Elementor, your site can potentially break. So uh, I've seen a lot of people say that the pricing model for Elementor is better and it is not because you have to pay this every single year and you do not get a lifetime plan. Now, personally, am I against this plan? No, I am not. I think that both companies should charge more. I think Divi giving out their theme, their entire theme and all their plugins for $249 is way too cheap. And I think um, the 199 plan is way too cheap as well because the amount of technology that goes into both of these page builders is incredible. I mean, both of these page builders have done revolutionary stuff. So I do feel that uh, these page builders should just charge more money, but that's my personal opinion. We're talking about the average consumer. So the pricing for this specific category, hands down, Divi wins by far because they have a lifetime access and Elementor does not. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel that Elementor should offer a lifetime plan. I mean, if other companies offer a lifetime plan, why can't Elementor? You know, I think that they should, maybe for like 500 bucks. You know, that's that's a good that's a good one, $500. Elementor, if you're watching this, do a lifetime for 500. And Divi, do the same, the 500. But for this specific category, we're gonna give this round to uh, the Divi theme. Next, we're gonna talk about the support of both companies, and I'm gonna give you like the real rundown of real WordPress support and what that means. And then I'll talk to you about the pros and the cons of both builders. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about like the behind the scenes talk between both page builders that really people don't like to talk about, but we're gonna talk about it at the end in this video. So first off, let's talk about support. Now, in my personal opinion, I do believe Elga Themes does offer better support. Now right here, for instance, I'll click on this little icon and then go to new conversation and fill out a support ticket. And I'll usually get a response within a few hours with Elegant Themes. Now with Elementor, I've used their support and sometimes guys, I don't get a response for maybe one or two days and it takes quite a bit of time to get a real answer of what, uh, what is going on. Now in their defense, they do have a large amount of free users that kind of flood their forms and I've seen that. So they do just get backed up sometimes. Now, a lot of the times when people actually want support, they don't really understand WordPress. So uh, a lot of these errors that you get from these page builders are not actually from either page builder. They're probably from uh, other plugins. They're from server settings, etc. Now, a big problem with Elementor is people are saying, oh, you get the white screen of death a lot. I'm sure you've he heard that term saying that your screen turns white. And that's just due to memory limits. You know, that can easily be fixed. And people are saying, oh, this is not working correctly. And it's usually because uh, a plugin that you have installed on the website isn't compatible with Divi. So that's like the real term of WordPress support. Both companies do support their products. It's just the fact that sometimes there might be other plugins or service settings that might conflict with the actual builder. So we're gonna give this round of support to Elegant Themes because I've just found that Elegant Themes over the years has just been a lot more timelier with their support tickets than Elementor. Now let's talk about the pros and the cons, then we'll talk a little bit about the politics of both page builders. Now, another thing with Divi is that when you disable this, you are given short codes. Now, personally, I think that's a very bad argument, but I have to address it because people talk about it. Now, let's say, for instance, you install Divi, you build a website and you deactivate Divi, you're given a lot of short codes everywhere. Now, people argue that this is not clean code. But personally, when you're building a website for yourself or another company, do you always build off someone else's work? No, you always start from scratch. How many times have you given a given a project and they're like, hey bro, my designer started something halfway, he screwed me, he took all my money, can you, can you fix the leftovers? No, 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 no. I'm building the website from scratch, I'm charging you a whole new quote, I'm not working off this other guy's work. So in that regard, I feel it's a very weak argument against Divi 
because when you go from any project from Divi to Flatsum, from Flatsum to Beaver Builder, you're gonna start from scratch anyway. So uh, I do feel that's a very weak argument, but uh, a lot of other plugins leave short codes. Like where's the argument against contact form seven or uh, another plugin because they all use short codes. So I feel that they're kind of attacking Divi in that, in that sense. But um, I do have to address it of people saying that's a problem. But um, those are just some underlying issues that you might come across with Divi. But um, I don't really think that they're that big of an issue, but that's my personal preference and my personal opinion. Now with Elementor, uh, I do like Elementor, but I do feel that their UX is just very outdated. I mean, look at this, click, click. I mean, this is like, I mean, we're going back in the future here. This is, we're going, we gotta get the DeLorean out. You've gotta come back with me. Where? Back to the future. We gotta go back in the future and, and uh, use another builder because this builder is just so old school. Uh, if you're gonna ask me, Daryl, you know, which one's the best? Which one, which one should I use? Am I gonna use Divi or Elementor? I'm gonna give my vote to Divi. I think now that Divi has the theme builder, I think Divi is just going to keep pushing out features and eventually uh, Elementor is gonna be really behind now because Divi actually has user-friendly interface while Elementor does not. So. Uh, now that if they push features out at the same time, it doesn't really matter at this point because Divi has a better UX. So in my opinion, if, Ele if Elementor wants to improve, they'll have to go back and fix their UX because this is just, I am no long, I, I refuse to build a website like this. I mean, like this, I, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So that's my personal opinion. That's my vote. I believe Divi is the winner. Now, let me know what you think about what I said in this video. Was I being fair? Was I being biased? Was I being not truthful? Was there something I did not say that I should have said? But let me know in the description below. Now, if you want to go ahead and purchase both of these page builders, there is a link below. Now, I do have an exclusive discount for Elegant Themes only. I do not have a discount for Elementor. So sorry, but that's just how it goes. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it. Let me know in the comments what you think about what I said. And my name is Daryl Wilson, and I will see you all in the next video. Uh -huh.